Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with Eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at, uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athlete's determination, the resiliency, everything to what me, made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On the Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and today's episode we are joined by a very special guest, professional hockey player Michael Bunn. Michael most recently played in the Federal Hockey League with the Carolina Thunderbirds. Michael played junior hockey in the USHL with the Lincoln Stars, along with playing in the EHL and the USPHL Elite Leagues, while also spending one season with Liberty University in the ACHA. Before starting his pro career with the Columbus Cotton Mouse of the Southern Professional Hockey League. So welcome to the show, Michael Bunn. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problems. So like, how have you been? Like, with how how's your day today? Like, how's your week going so far? It's been good, man. Um currently I'm in a I'm in a rehab. Um, we do a lot of Bible studies. So I was in, in the Bible um Monday through Friday. And it's good, man. It's really good. Yeah, that, that's great. Just to go to the Bible studies and everything. Like, what what have you been learning from from the, the Bible studies? I mean, a lot. I mean, how to live better. So uh, that's great that you're learning. You're learning about all that stuff. So like, yeah, going into I want to go into a little bit of your hockey career here a little bit. So like. Can we get some background information on you? Like what made you want to get into hockey? Like when did you start and like why did you decide to start playing? So in 97, the Carolina Hurricanes came to Raleigh and I was three years old. Um, I I loved it. I loved it. Um, I watched the games on TV and my parents really wanted me to, to get and I was good at it and uh, yeah I mean that's pretty much it yeah that's that's great stuff right there and Carolina and Hurricanes they're, they're a pretty good team around that time and it was must have been really fun to watch uh, watch them play and just be able to have a have a team in Carolina that you're able to just watch and grow up with. So then you you started playing uh, juniors after uh, you played prep hockey for a little bit, I believe I saw. And then you went going to juniors and you played in the USHL for the Lincoln Stars where you played in 10 games. Like what was that first year of junior hockey like for you? I mean, it was a big adjustment from prep hockey to the USHL. It was a big job. Yeah, and, like, you were playing, like, the top league in the United States, so that must have been a hard adjustment. So, like, what was that adjustment like for you, and just what did you have to do to get used to playing at that level? 
practicing, just the practices were really high paced and everything about it was a lot um, more professional. So just um, getting used to it, um, doing practice and, and, and stuff. I, um, I, went, I went to Lincoln with, with a torn ACL. Cool. So, so you had to adjust to that too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, and, what was that adjustment like to playing to like the going in with the torn ACL? It was really hard, man, because um, I had just had surgery, so I went I went in on on IR. So I was doing rehab while the other guys were playing. And it was just tough, man. It was so tough. Yeah, that must have been really hard because you're what you want to get back on. You want to get on the ice, and you're watching everyone else play, and you just can't wait for you you to be done rehabbing your ACL and just get back out there with the boys. Yeah, exactly. You don't really feel part of the team when you're sitting when you're sitting in the stands all the time. Yeah, for sure. So then you you go into the lineup like what was that adjustment like to being part of the team now and you're actually like playing games like being a part of the team like how is that different from obviously sitting out and sitting in the stands first game i scored a hat trick not bad yeah i don't know how that happened <laughs> but it did well you got a hat trick and you start out your your junior career with a hat trick so that that's not bad that's that's pretty good if you ask me so like yeah. you you notched four goals that season too. So the first three came during that during that one game. It's like what was it like? What was it like scoring like scoring those goals in those ten games that you play and just being able being a part of the team like you said and just enjoying the moment. I mean it was awesome, man. I mean those ten games were a lot of fun and also really really hard on me. Because of my knee, my knee, I came back too early from my knee injury. Did you, did you get re-injured then? Yes. I remember, I remember one game after the second period, I was sitting there shaking and I couldn't stop and my leg was shaking so bad. I told the coach, I'm like, I got to stop playing, man. I got to stop playing because my leg was shaking so bad. Oh, that, that must've been rough. So then you go back on the ir it's like and then you had to recover again it's like do how what was that process like especially like you didn't want to come back too early like you did the last time so like what did you like wait extra like more more time before you going back on the ice yeah i actually came home to raleigh north carolina after those 10 games because i just couldn't do it anymore I mean, the coaches were were really ridiculous. I mean, they were they were um, really tough on us. Yeah, and, and um, that's that's I just rough. Just, I, yeah, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So then, uh, then you the following season you played for the Connecticut Oilers in the EHL before going to the East Coast Eagles in the USPHL Elite League. So, like, what was your experience like over in Connecticut and playing in the EHL? I went to the Green Bay Gamblers camp that, that, that spring and they told me, they were like, well, we want you, but we have to, we have to call Lincoln and trade for you. So they did call Lincoln and Lincoln said they weren't trading for me. That, that must have been rough for you, especially since the coaches were so uh, rough in Lincoln. Like they lead you guys way too hard and then you, they're not going to trade for you. So then you have to go down to go to the EHL. It's like, what, how, how is that since like everything that transpired, trans, transpired with, with Green Bay and Lincoln? I mean, can I give, I mean it was a lot different. I mean, playing in front of 5,000 versus playing in front of, I mean, 50 or 100 people, a little bit different. Yeah, but sure. I mean, um, that is fun. The hockey was our hockey was all right, and it was fun. 
Yeah. So like, what was it like playing in front of all those 5,000 fans compared to like the 50 or hundred, like you said before, and just the, the atmosphere around the game. Uh, in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was all right. I mean, playing in front of the 5,000 was awesome because like when I scored the hat trick, I mean, all the hats came flying. That was probably 300 hats more than that. That's awesome. But um, yeah, Connecticut was a little bit different with the less fans. Yeah. So like, what was it like? What was the biggest difference from playing the USHL to playing the EHL and the USPHL that you saw? Get free stuff. There's no trainers. There's no equipment guy. There's um, less fans. I mean, a lot is different. It was like going back to high school, basically. Yeah, that, that must have been pretty, pretty rough, especially since – it's a you're playing juniors and you have to like go back a level just like uh not like a not like playing level but like the facilities and all that 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 must not must have not been that yeah. great but suck yeah i i would imagine so then you go into you get moved from Connecticut to the East Coast Eagles and the USPHL Elite League. So, like, was what was it like getting traded to to the USPHL? I mean, it was fine because I I basically left I left Connecticut to come home and to play for the Eagles because I live five minutes from the rink here in Raleigh. Yeah, that was that must have been great for you because you're only five minutes from home, so you're able to just just go home right after the game and just you're that close to home. Like, what was it like playing at playing five minutes away from your home and just being able to enjoy the junior hockey ride just by living at home? I mean, it was fun. Oh yeah, I I would imagine that would be a ton of fun. It's so, like. What was your yeah. ex- what was your experience like in at East Coast Eagles and just the hockey there? The hockey was it was all right. It wasn't great. But no, we had we had really good coaches. Yeah, that's... and I liked it a lot because we had good coaches and a fun group, really, really tight, tight knit in the locker room group of guys and it was a lot of fun yeah that that's awesome just you guys may not have been the greatest hockey but you your teammates and you were close like you're close to home mm-hmm. like the the coaches like everything like seems like it was a great fit for you and just great fit for the for the city overall and just being able to play play games while also playing high level of juniors You guys, you guys yeah, also made much. the, you guys, fun. yeah, you guys also made the playoffs that year with the Eagles. Like, what was the experience like in the biggest difference from playing in the regular season to playing in a playoff game? I mean, I mean, everybody take the playoffs a little bit more seriously. So it was, it was good. I mean, I think we went up to Hampton Roads and got beat, but. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was fun. It was really competitive, and it was um, a lot of fun. Yeah, that that's unfortunate that you guys didn't do that great against that team. But you guys, it was it was fun playing playoff hockey. I would imagine like the intensity, everything goes through the roof during playoff time. So I'm a, playoff hockey is always fun to play. And like, let's be honest here. Yeah, it is. So then, uh, yeah, exactly. So then the next season, you stuck with. Then Eagles that entire season put up a career high in juniors with 15 goals, 22 assists, 37 points. So what was going right for you that season, like being able to f- be, be in the right fit at the right time for that team? Well, I mean, that year, I, I, um, 
went to Liberty University at the start and left after two weeks because I didn't think that I could do it. The school plus the hockey. So I came here, I came out to Raleigh and played East Coast Eagles. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I did. I did focus a lot that year. Yeah, that's uh, college and college and school. I'll also play hockey. That's a, it's a lot to put together, and like, mm. and like that that balance like is mm. hard for sure. But then you go into go back to rally and uh, play and play, put up season high numbers, and just you just have a fun time playing there. It's like, did you have that sensibility that you're fitting in and that you're supposed to be there right when you came back from playing at Liberty for two weeks, then going back in the East coast Eagles. Oh yeah. I was, I was the big dog. Oh yeah. Because, um, I played, I played in the USHL. So everybody knew that. And the young guys look up to me. Yeah. So like, what was it like having those guys look up to you, especially since you played in the USHL and you're at the, best best league in the United States and just being able to come back down and just help those guys move up the ranks. I mean it was it was good. It was good because um the young guys we had a good group of young guys on the team. Yeah that's that's fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah and then uh it's so like going throughout like your entire junior hockey career, like what has been like your favorite memory that you've put up in, in junior hockey? Oh, definitely um, the hat trick in the first USHL game. Yeah, that, that must have been sick. And just having that memory forever now, and it's just going to that, – that's unreal. Yeah, Yes. So then, uh, so then you go after your junior hockey career is over, you then go into uh, in a playing professionally, playing pro hockey at the SBHL level with the Columbus Con Mouse. So, like, what was that first pro hockey taste like, and just being able to play in those two games that you you played with Columbus? I mean, it was fun, man. I mean, yeah, that's that's great, and just. Then going into 2017, 2018, and 2018, 2019, you played for Carolina for the Thunderbirds, and you played in 48 games in 2017, 2018, and then you played in 52 year in 2018, 2019, and you put up some extremely good numbers. Like, what, what were those two years like for you? I mean, the first year was, was good. You all, you also won the championship that year, right? Yeah, the second year. Yeah, it's so like what was that winning that championship like? Because you're you're on a championship team now, and you will forever hold that memory to close to you. Yeah, I mean, when the, winning that championship was awesome. I mean, it was it was great because I knew that we we would win it. Looking at our team, we were, we were really good. And we were really, really tight. Yeah, and that, that's super important for a championship team. Like, you got to be that close. You got to be close in it. And, like, the, the chemistry builds, like, throughout the season. Then when playoff hits, like, you're, the chemistry is there. Like, everything's flowing. Juice is flowing. Everything. And just, you know you're going to win that championship. So, that must have been a really great feeling. Yeah, it was. It was. So throughout your uh, time in Columbus, you uh, you've also became a fan favorite over in Carolina. So, like, what does it mean to you to be a fan favorite and everyone looking up to you in Carolina? I mean, it was awesome. Yeah, that's yeah that's because great. um, yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, that's just – everyone loves to be a fan favorite and just, like, you, like, you had that example and you, you like, went up and up and above with what everyone expected. And, like, you're one of the top guys there. So, like, then going into 
2018, you go to the Florida Everblades training camp in the ECHL. It's like, what was that experience like being at a training camp in the in the ECHL in the East Coast Hockey League? I mean, they they're next level because at their training camp, I mean, it was um, we played Orlando twice. Orlando's a Orlando's a good a fil- a good rivalry there too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, what was it like playing in those rivalry games against against Orlando? I mean, it was awesome. It was yeah. So uh, that that's awesome. So like, I got a few more questions for you before uh, we get to, before uh, we get this thing done with. So, uh, what what's been your favorite part throughout your entire hockey career so far? Carolina and that 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 um moment in junior hockey when I scored the hat trick yeah that's that's unreal and like that those are some great memories to have so uh my next question for you is like what what was your favorite part about practice and your like your least favorite part about practice when when you had when you had games like when you when you were practicing like what was some of your favorite parts i mean my favorite part about practice was probably when andre was in a good mood when when our coach andre was in a good mood i always love when coaches are good in good moods play three yeah, we would play three on three or whatever. Yeah, but that's... when he was in a bad mood. Oh yeah, that's uh, it's not good. No, it was not. <laughs> yeah, that you you don't want to coach in a bad mood, but but when when they're in a good mood, mood like that's it's they're nothing but fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Michael. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. And I want to wish you the best of luck with everything going, going on in the future. And I really, really enjoyed this interview with you. Thanks, man. Me too. I did too.